Psalm 24, a Psalm of David. <clears throat> Again, we're going to look at the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ. The second advent. The earth is the Lord's. And the devil has a possession of it. He offered Jesus, said, listen, I'll give you all these worlds. Not the earth. Even so, he got the whole world in his hands, not the earth. The earth has been made by God, created by God, and belongs to God. The worlds, the earth is the planet, the worlds are the civilizations, are given over to the devil. The world, see, the earth is the Lord's and the fullest thereof, everything that's in the earth. The world, not the earth, the earth is not the world. And they that there dwell therein, the people, the devil owns that part. For he, God, founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Genesis 1, 1, the waters. Everything of the world and the earth and all that was created by God, not evoluted. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Hill, a mountain, Jerusalem. Who shall stand in his holy place? Well, that's where the priests went. That's where the table of children is. That's where the candlestick is. That's where the altar incense is. And there's only one prescribed people that were to be in there were to be the priests. A king tried to enter in there. He came out with leprosy. John the Baptist's father is in there doing the, the offering of incense at the time of prayer. And a man shows up without wings and he's all, oh, what are you doing in here? Who are you? You're not a priest. But look what it says here. He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. And again, the priests are the only ones allowed in that holy place. So it's not going to be just any priest that can go in there, but the priests that are clean and washed in the millennium, that's going to be so. There were vile priests in the time of Jeremiah going in doing what they were supposed to be doing. In the time of Eli, his sons were out there mating with the, with the females at the gate and they're taking the offerings before the offerings were to be given. The law prescribed you not to eat the, flat, the fat and they were eating the fat because it wasn't being burnt fully. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord. From verse 4. The one has the clean hands, the pure heart, and has it done deceitfully, and is not into vanity. That vanity today, I mean, that charge can be to every American Christian. We all got a vanity. We all do something that's worthless, that's empty, that does no value to God. And we, you say, well, I haven't. You mean you're not going to get wood, hay, or stubble at the judgment seat of Christ? Wood, hay, or stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. That's vanity. That was not done for Jesus Christ. That was done for us and for our own fulfillment. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. That righteousness comes of Jesus Christ. Now remember, when we're talking about the Old Testament, we're talking about the millennium, we're still talking about the children of Israel. The law is still in place in the millennium. The temple, the sacrifices are still in place. There are priests still doing the priestly duty. This is the generation of them that seek him in the millennium. And seek thy face, O Jacob, Israel, Selah. There's that second advent reference. The generation you find in the prophets, they're going to, Gentiles are even going to walk up to the Jews and say, listen, God is with you. Take us to the Messiah. That's not today. The Gentiles are going to the Jews saying, this is the Savior. And they're out like rejecting. They were not, the Jews are not going to reject 
the Messiah, Jesus Christ, in the millennium. If they do, there's a lake of fire. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And Ezekiel speaks about those gates. And be ye lifted up, the gates. Not humans, the gates. Ye everlasting doors. The King, capital K, of glory shall come in. Jesus Christ. Pilate wrote, wrote above the head of Jesus. Lift up your head. Above the head of Jesus. King of the Jews. Who is this capital K king of glory? Who is he? The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah, strong and mighty. Who is this king of glory? Revelation 19. Again, Pilate told us who that king of glory is. One day the Jews are going to acknowledge the King of Glory. Sitting on David's seat. A throne. We know Revelation 19 11 is Jesus Christ. Verse 16. He, Jesus, had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings. There it is. Who is the King of Glory? It says the Lord. Jehovah. So take the Jehovah Witnesses and cast them off in the lake of fire because there is Jesus the King and there is Jesus Jehovah again. How many times have we seen that in, in the Psalms alone? The Lord mighty in battle. What's that battle? Coming back on the horse with a sword, with, with fire coming out of his mouth, with an army, the church. Again, repeat, lift up your heads, O gates. Even lift them up, O ye everlasting doors. The King of glory shall come in. That's Jesus. When he came into Jerusalem the first time, he came in going to get a crown of thorns by the Roman government to be the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. The second time he comes into, the, into Jerusalem, he's coming, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, with many crowns. This is not the first advent. Shall come in. Second advent reference. Into Jerusalem again. Who is the king of glory? In case you, the Jehovah Witnesses didn't get it the first time. The Lord of hosts. Angels. All that there be. He is the capital king of glory. Selah. So I guess Jehovah Witnesses are wrong what they teach. 